Now that we've installed IntelliJ, let's create a simple Hello World style Spring Boot application. And I'll emphasize simple, and I'll also say there might be some things here you see that you don't know about yet, but don't worry, we will cover that in a series of future video lectures. So let's start by starting IntelliJ IDEA, and then let's go to New Project. Now if you take a look, you'll see there are several different types of projects that we can try, and one of them is a Spring Initializer project. Now this is really neat because Spring Initializer, you can go to on the web and you can start a project that way, and then you could import it into an IDE like IntelliJ or like Eclipse. But you see that it's so popular that IDEA has it built in. So first of all, we need to select a JDK. Let's do that. Choose a starter service URL. That's all fine. And now let's choose next. Let's think of a package name. Package name is typically a domain name in reverse, which makes it unique. So I'm going to choose com.myplantdiary, which is a domain name that I own. So I can use that and I know that's unique to me. Uh, for your projects, think of a domain name that you might own or one that you might want to buy. I would simply encourage you not to use any personally identifiable information in the package name like your Bearcat ID or anything like that, because ideally many people will work on this project and a package should be more general to the entire project. Artifact, let's call this Enterprise, since we're building an enterprise application. And you can see that that's going to put together a package here called com.myplantdiary.enterprise. And it's also putting together a Maven artifact. More on Maven later. Everything else here looks good. Let's go ahead and choose next. A couple things that we want to take a look at are any dependencies that we're going to need. And we can add more of these later uh, as we're working through the POM XML. But we'll take a quick look at a few things. Template Engine, I'm going to use Timeleaf, which is a UI rendering engine that works well with Spring Boot. Uh, there are other options as well, especially if you're just hitting REST endpoints. Uh, let's go down and take, take a look at SQL. I will likely use MySQL for this class. So I'm going to add the MySQL driver here. NoSQL is an option as well if you want to do something like that. There are all kinds of other options we have around cloud, cloud security, testing and the like. For the moment, I'm happy with what I see. So I'm going to go ahead and choose next. Project name, location's good. Just remember that location in case you have to get down and do any editing down there. Look at any files outside of IntelliJ. And then we'll choose Finish. And it's starting our application up. It gives us some tips here, which it's easy to hurry up and hit close. But I will say I do read these carefully because I think really learning the IDE and all of its features really well is important to being very productive and getting more done in little time. So spend just a little bit of time to take a look at these. One thing I really like about Spring Boot is something that when I first heard it, I didn't believe it. But when I started to use Spring Boot, I saw it in reality and saw that it actually does work this way. And that is Spring Boot really emphasizes little to no configuration. In other words, it just keeps everything at the default. And if you want something different, then you specify what you want that is different. So it assumes things like, in our case, that we're running with Apache. Now, if I take a look under Source, Main, I'm going to see Java, and then I'm going to see Enterprise Application. And this is a class that will start up our Spring Boot instance. You see that this was already made for us. In addition to this, we need a controller. So I'm going to right click and make a brand new class, and we'll add quite a bit to this class over time, but this will give us a good start. So new class, since this is my plant diary, I'm simply going to call it plant diary controller. Just a plain old Java class, and we're going to add a few Spring Boot annotations to it. So let's start by adding controller. Alt-Enter will automatically import that for us. And now the controller decides what renders when a user hits a URL or an endpoint. It can return back just plain old data, like JSON data, which we'll often see from a RESTful service. Or if we're using a Timeleaf template, as I've set up here, we can return an HTML look and feel as well. So let's make a method that's going to return a page. We'll simply say public string index and open curly, close curly. And then we'll say return start. 
Now start is the name of an HTML page that we're going to need to make. So it will actually be start.html, but we just need the name of the page without the extension. So start. We also need to say that we want to render this page when the user hits a specific endpoint. And we will describe that endpoint in an annotation above this method. We'll call it request mapping. Inside of request mapping, we'll put double quote and then a slash inside of that, which just means root, which means if the user gets to the root of our domain or the root of our web service, they're going to be greeted with the start page. Now we need to import request mapping just like we did with controller. In IntelliJ IDEA, uh, an alt enter will typically do that. And they'll even take it one step further here and they say, gosh, I want to import this for you, but I notice it's not on the class path, so just hit enter and I will go ahead and add that to the class path for you. It will take just a moment to grab those dependencies and you might need to do another alt enter to import it, but there's a good chance it's gonna go ahead and figure it out and go ahead and give you the import automatically. So at this point, we're good. Let me go ahead and add a bit of Javadoc here that simply says handle the root or slash endpoint and return a start page. Now, we need to make that start page. And remember, we're using the Timeleaf templating engine. So that's going to look for a folder or a directory under resources. So let's go to the resources folder, which should already exist in your application. Choose directory and simply give this the name templates, plural templates, just like so. Now under templates, let's right click again and choose new. And this time let's choose HTML file and capitalization is very important. It should be the same word that you put in that return statement and then plus .html. So I use the word start, all lowercase, I'll say start.html. Okay, plain old HTML page. Let's just give it a little bit of markup so that we know that we are seeing the correct page. So I'll say my plant diary. And I will say, uh, plants are wonderful things, just like so, and save. Now the fun part. Remember that we said that Spring Boot does a lot of configuration for us automatically. So really, all we need to do here is right click and choose run. It's going to run out. It's going to grab Apache, if we don't already have it, to render this application. It's going to build the application, and then it's going to show it to us in a browser. The first time might take just a moment, but I have found that typically when you start working with Spring Boot, it's very quick to get it up and running. Let's go ahead and allow access here. And now let's navigate to a browser and all we need to do is type in localhost 8080 and take a look. Plants are wonderful things and my plant diary. So we've seen in this video how to get up and running a very simple, straightforward Spring Boot application in a fresh IntelliJ IDEA installation and we've confirmed that everything's working. I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.